two on this video. We just had a I was talking for four minutes and then this uh, this proof of concept completely failed me because of a GFI seat that was tripped. I'll have to look into that. Um, probably because my grounding is temporary. Okay, so basically this is the last video I'll be making for the uh, before I actually get all this shit into an enclosure and put it on my roof. Well, put the panels up at least. So what I've done is I've wired up on the AC side, I've wired up the auto transfer switch, which is a really core component of uh, my proof of concept, which is basically going to demonstrate that I can um, provide, you know, a couple of 15 amp circuits back fed, or with redundancy provided by utility. So get this thing open and my fingers are completely operative. So this thing was a $30 cheap unit on Amazon, made in China, of course, made to kill. Um, but uh, Thompson really would kill me with this wiring configuration in here. Basically, uh, it's two inputs, two 120 volt inputs, and uses a magnet or a heat sensor, more or less, and a buffer s switch of some sort um, to sense the, uh, the current status of two inputs and prefers one over the other. So, um, in this case, I would prefer to have my electricity fed from my transformer, my Xantrax. The Xantrax doesn't have um, posts for uh, DC or AC output. Uh, it really should, but you have to pay extra for, say, features like that. This is really meant to be used on a boat or a truck or a you know, car or something fancy like that. But um, I'm going to get a real inverter. It won't be an issue. Grid tie one. But um, basically, I prefer, I basically wire that in using just a regular you know, PC Molex connector cable, 15 amp rated or whatever, 14 gauge stranded inside. And then I have another, a second one of those that I'm going to plug into my utility feed. So, um, basically I'm going to plug in, there's going to be a delay. Here, feed, this is on, plug you in, and you'll notice that it doesn't come on immediately. The buffer circuit has to make a decision. Um, and it'll switch on in a second. While that's, while that's going on, um, the LED ballast up top is, uh, I've got two of them, but this one's a dud. I'm about to have a talk with the guys from LEDwholesale.com or LEDoutletters.com or wherever I got it. The one I have is great. Oh, there we go. Um, the circuit came on, you heard it click. And it means that the, uh, the contacts there have, through magnetism or whatever, bolted up and made contact with that one circuit. Um, and now I can go ahead and plug this other feed into my utility. There we go. And now I have essentially redundant power for $30 um, and probably a very serious fire hazard. But uh, I'll go ahead and turn off the inverter and you'll notice as I do this, I have to hold it down, that the light essentially stays on. So that, that blip there I could provide redundancy for with, with circuits and electronics that have transformers that could probably be handled. Um, not so bad. That was maybe a, a second or a millisecond. Half, half a second, 500 milliseconds of of loss there. So pretty quick transfer over. And then uh, as I return service, it, it'll make a decision to uh, there we go back on. You'll hear it click back over in a second, so it really prefers. Oh. Let's see here. Wait for it to click. There you go. Back over on the, the generator. So um, hopefully that'll be sufficient. The next thing I got to do, really, if I'm what's left to do, is you know develop a, a plan to get this all into the enclosure. I think the transformers or the uh, um, the inverters really can't be in the same enclosure with the battery. The the chance of an arc happening from the AC DC contacts there with that gas being released by the battery. We're gonna have to come up with some other solution, but. Everything else, charge regulator, disconnects and everything, that can all go into the enclosure or at the very least be mounted on it and, punk and I can puncture holes and mount everything. And that's got to go back to ledwholesalers.com. That's definitely a dud. Other than that, it's good to go. Uh, I think I'll run some load tests off of this tonight. Uh, you know, run the Christmas lights or something like that and really deep cycle this battery and see if I can beat it up, abuse it. Um, this guy's kind of for irony, but uh, yeah, that's it, pretty successful. Got to get a wiring harness wired up for a uh, parallel configuration, 12 volts on uh, some more batteries. Got to find a good local distributor for those, so I'm not paying freight, um, and uh, it's good to go.
pretty happy with what we've seen so far. So, um, don't listen to the cynics or the critics. I mean, um, I literally did this in about a week. You know, just sat down with a reference manual and, you know, looked at the individual components. And, you know, uh, the energy companies don't want you to make, think this stuff's easy, but, you know, look at all the trouble we go just to get Internet access into our homes and, and uh, you know roads to nowhere. I mean, for an extra hour of labor, the construction of your house, an electrician could easily wire all this stuff. And this stuff could all come, this doesn't have to be individual components. This could all be, you know, one, essentially one enclosure, you know, integrated directly into the load center of your house. And, you know, whatever works for you, wind, you know, geothermal, what you know, however, however you want to, you know, turn a transformer and, and generate amps and watts. Um, this stuff's easy. I'm not even an electrician, so... Um, Anyway, signing off. I'll let you guys know as soon as I get this into an enclosure and um, start collecting amps on the south-facing slope of uh, 329 Hancock Street. Anyway, pghgreenhouse.org, Brian Sklecki, signing off. Later.